Thank you, Anand. Manish, uh, that the question naturally leads down to you. 40,000 crores, uh, the finance minister is confident. Uh, what would you advise him about? How do you advise him how, how to go about it? That, since that's your job and your question to the finance minister. Well, first of all, let me just say uh, the capital markets are great admirers of the finance minister and he taught us how to dream with tearing up the rule books in the early 90s and then setting the path for direct taxes and ASEAN level taxation. So he comes with great credibility and honestly, if I were to compare the mood with last September and today, uh, things are you know much, much better. Uh, but I echo what you said earlier as well as what Anand said, uh, that you know given that it's you know, Dhoni or Tendulkar coming out to bat, uh, you do expect that flourish. Uh, and when the world itself is in such a deep sort of abyss, uh, you wish for someone who can give you that catalyst or that trigger, which in a way revives the animal spirits. Uh, and my questions, therefore, are on you know, two fronts. One is to do with industry and really around the current account deficit, as well as in a way solving the fisc. Uh, is unless you get industry to invest, uh, and Anand alluded to the process issues which people face and maybe you know that's why India's ranking as a place to do business is so low. Uh, how do we get that ease of operation moving on the ground? Uh, and I was surprised we didn't create manufacturing enclaves or special economic zones to give a fillip to exports to solve this long-term crisis that we seem to have 20 years after reform started. We are back with a 5% current account deficit, a 5% fiscal deficit. Uh, you know, Indians are still buying gold. They're not buying equities. Uh, we are still, you know, taxing cars on the base of their length or their height. Uh, where, where did we go wrong as a country? And maybe we were looking for some answers to that. So that's really question one. Uh, and question two is really around the capital markets. Again, something Anand alluded to. Uh, how do we change behavior patterns of investors in this country? We can't clearly be you know, running on foreign inflows forever because like you yourself said, different countries have different you know, mood swings uh, and that impacts capital flows in that particular week. Uh, and unless we can create a large domestic investor constituency by changing behavior, uh, and I would suggest what stops us from saying the index companies in the Nifty or the BSE 30, there's no capital gains for domestic investors. Come back to markets, change your behavior, get away from gold. This is the place to make money. Uh, you know, a flourish like that from a creative person like Mr. Chidambaram, I would think could have reignited animal spirits. And while the world may be gloomy, we can get market share in a world which is gloomy because their confidence is down. And, you know, there are people like Anand who are going out indeed and winning market share across the world in automobiles. Uh, and can we find two, three, four industries that we can back and really operate as India Inc. behind them to go out and, in a in a sense, plant our flag in this world? Okay, uh, so it's really reeling from lack of confidence. Suggestions and questions for you, uh, sir. You see, where did we go wrong? We have not gone wrong anywhere. The world economy, since... 2008 has been in deep trouble and since we are part of the world economy we're affected we did pretty well in 2008 to stem the slide we may have in fact overdone it by the second and third stimulus packages which pushed up inflation which pushed up the fiscal deficit but brought us some growth but that's uh, behind us now in the last eight years, in six years, we have grown at over 8%. Which other country can make that claim except China? So we have not gone so very wrong that we have to wear sackcloth and ashes. What has happened is, in the current year, growth has slipped to 5%. But that doesn't mean we can't get on to 6% and 7%, one rung at a time. And I'm confident we'll get to 6% next year and 7% the year after. Our potential is 8%. We're aiming at 9%. Therefore, I don't think anything has gone terribly wrong. But since things have gone wrong, there are some matters which have to be fixed.
The first is the fiscal deficit, and I've spoken about it. The second is the current account deficit. Now, let me ask uh, our panelists, at least those who are familiar with what we're talking about, how many spoke about the current account deficit until I spoke about it repeatedly? In fact, not many in government and not many in industry even acknowledge something like a current account deficit. Manufacturing exports is the only way to pay for our imports. We can export some agricultural products. We can export uh, some other things, but the bulk of our export earnings must come out of manufactured goods. Software, of course, is another big earner. Exports is the only way to pay for imports. Now, he asked me, why have you not announced this zone and that zone? These zones are already there. There are special economic zones. They've been there for nearly 10 years now. There are the new uh, manufacturing zones, which the Commerce and Industry Minister announced a couple of years ago. There are four new zones for chemicals and petrochemical industry. Simply announcing them doesn't mean the zones will come in place. The zones are there. We have to ensure that people come and set up factories and begin to manufacture. My job is to ensure that people get in and manufacture, invest in manufacturing, which is why we gave that investment allowance. It's an old idea, but that had been put on the shelf for many years. We took that idea, dusted it, and said, all right, since things have come to such a pass, we will reintroduce the investment allowance. Now, people are sitting on piles of cash. Anand didn't answer that question. The public sector is sitting on piles of cash. The private sector is sitting on piles of cash. I had meetings with the public sector executives in uh, December and January and told them, if they don't achieve their CapEx targets, I will tell them to pay me a special dividend. Now, for the next year's CapEx, we have just sent out the letter. Each PSU is required to fill out that pro forma and tell us what their CapEx targets are for next year. We're going to monitor it very closely, beginning from April. Every quarter, I will monitor what they're investing. And if they don't invest, we're going to ask them, why are you not investing? We're going to hold the CMD to account. So we are going to closely follow the manufacturing sector, both in the private sector and the public sector. I'm going to meet with the individual business houses to ask them what their CapEx plans are. So I think we are doing everything possible to restart uh, manufacturing, to restart the growth engine. Now, the second uh, suggestion that he made, well, that's a very, uh, if I may say, narrow partisan interest. Why should capital gains not be taxed? It's another form of income. If salaries can be taxed, if professions can be taxed, Earnings from professions can be taxed. In fact, even some kinds of agricultural income are indirectly taxed by clubbing it with your non-agricultural income. Why shouldn't capital gains be taxed? What is so sacred about those who make money in the capital market that their income should not be taxed? Yes. Well, that is the finance minister speaking on his first ever Google Hangout in conversation with CNBC TV 18, Senthil Chengalvarayan, Anand Mahindra, and a whole host of others. Uh, we will get you more on that exclusive conversation on India Business Hour in 30 minutes from now, but the finance minister making it very, very clear there can be no big bang approach at this point in time because what is really the need of the hour is stability. It needs to be measured steps to restart growth, to kickstart the economy, and expect more of that through the year is the message coming in from the finance minister in conversation with economists, students, housewives and of course industry more on India Business Hour.